Woo! I'm excited about this one, man. Let me tell you why. Uh, I didn't even feel like doing the intro and just bringing this brother on. I figured I'd start this and just consider you as a co-host on this thing, John. Let me tell you why, man. I have done probably like 7,000 interviews in my entire life. And I'm proud to say I did the last Black Rob interview. That's a fact. Okay. But I have talked to people that I don't know before. I have talked to people I already know. And then you got to ask some questions you already know the answer to. And then there's brothers like yourself, man. There's brothers that I have known of, but probably needed to take more steps to get to know a little bit better and everything. So um, as we get ready for the release, while we're recording this of the Bam Guy magazine, I have to truly say, man, last was truly not least. I say the best for last. John Preston <laughs> me. And I'm saying this as a co-host on his own interview. How you doing, bro? <laughs> I'm doing well, doing well. Thank you, thank you. Man, I appreciate you for taking the time to come on and stuff, man. Um, tell, tell them about a little about yourself. Uh, whatever you need to do, your Instagram, whatever. Just kind of let everybody know some of your background. All right. My name is John Preston. I am a photographer based in Dallas, Texas. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at spot on EP. Again, that is spot on EP, the same for Facebook. Email is spot on EP at gmail.com. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. No How are you? How's the weather in Dallas? It's getting better today. It's been a it's been a doozy for the weekend, off and on storms, but sun's starting to uh, come out today. That's good. Glad to hear that. Glad to hear that, man. So, uh, you're a photographer, yep. and a damn and a damn good one. If I can go ahead and say that to you, man, I got to give you props where props is deserved and stuff like that, man. Um, Thank you. It's a desire I've always had to have. Like, it's a totally different discipline. I ain't gonna lie to you, like. Everybody has their trade. Everybody has their things. But with the way that photography advances day after day, like you truly got to be a master of your craft, man, because the next time some equipment come out, you might be lost. <laughs> How do you yeah. keep up with all this stuff? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's definitely hard to keep up with the new programs, the new equipment, the new lenses. It's just... It seems like every day photography is evolving into something bigger and better. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, let me ask you this, man. Like, help a brother out. Like, because, I, like I said, I have a desire to do it. And then that even led to me making a little bit of pocket change off of it. You know, I shot a couple weddings and things of that nature. But I ain't going to lie to you, John. I'm, I'm, rock, I'm rocking with a Canon uh, EOS. I think it's like a T, T something. T7 or T6. It's a T7. And what's crazy okay. is, man, I got it off of Amazon and it was part of one of those bundle packages they have where you get like all mm -hmm. the equipment and mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. of which didn't work or I don't know how to work it. So Right. Well, the funny thing is, I don't have a Canon, but I do have a Nikon. And I started off the very same way you did. This is a kit camera. Mm -hmm. It came with two lenses, a bunch of extra equipment that I've never really even used. But I upgraded my lens to a better lens. So it's really not the body that matters. It's more so the lens that counts the most. Gotcha. That's good advice because I've been doing all the other stuff. I've been investing so much in. I got like a light, man. Like you see people. I was looking at what everybody else was doing to try to copy them. So I go yes. up in clubs and, and things of that nature. And I see somebody with a light. I feel like I want a light. <laughs> so... <laughs> I, I go invest this money in a light, man, and I haven't been anywhere dark enough to use the doggone thing. So, yeah, um, a basic kit camera can get the job done for those that are starting off and want to do it as a hobby, and maybe just to get your feet wet in the whole photography world. How long you been at it? To be truthfully honest, I started. Um, I got my business name registered in December of 2019. Uh, went for throttle January 2020. So I've only been actually doing this for just over maybe a year, year and a half. But you had the knowledge to do it though. Like you, you had the desire, you had the knowledge, you just needed the equipment or? Yeah, I've always been that guy that had the cell phone out, making sure everybody had a picture, videos and that of that nature. So yeah, it's always been a passion to be a photographer. I just came across the money to actually get into the game. And to book you, they will go to Instagram and they will hit you up via email. 
or yes yes instagram spot on ep there should be a booking uh logo on my page or you can just send me an email and spot on ep at gmail.com spot on ep at gmail.com if y'all hear it we got the instagram right there and everything so all right first step man um for, for me, this is how I work. Let, tell me if I'm right or if I'm wrong. So first step for me was, I was like, okay, I just want to be, I just want to be the guy. So I go get a camera. Um, would you prefer a Nikon or would you prefer the Canon or does it really make a difference? It's really a preference thing. Um, honestly, it's all about preference. The reason I went with Nikon, it was more budget friendly at the time. Just to be truthfully honest, that's why I went with the Nikon. I am trying to upgrade. Uh, my heart is set on the Sony A7, which is a new camera that just recently came out. I was going to ask you about something, man. Like, it seems like everything they do is like just ridiculous. Like, awesome. um, <laughs> yeah, TV. <laughs> Whatever yeah. it is, I'm waiting on them to get into like like some serious phones and things of that nature because it's yeah. gonna be like time to say goodbye to like the iPhone. I don't know what they had thought about it. They should for sure. Sony should definitely step that game up and come on over to the cell phone world. Yeah. All right. So John, um, so we got a camera. Um, what was the next step? We started booking shows immediately or things of that nature, or how did you how did you go from there? Me personally, what I did is I started offering free photo shoots just to kind of get my name out there, show people what you're capable of doing versus, hey, I need $300 from you and you don't even know what I'm capable of doing. Right. So I would definitely suggest anybody that's starting off, you got to give a little to get a little. Which is smart, which is smart. So like, you know, then I did the opposite, which is kind of why I messed up and things that nature because people have... <laughs> like expectations and stuff so with you with you giving out the free photos and things of that nature it's actually giving you some practice time some things of that nature and it's also allowing them to get their photo shoots but you can't really complain either if they don't have a problem with something because it's free and exactly you didn't pay me for it so you get what you pay for and you didn't pay so it is it's kind of it is what it is it's just something to work on and grow and build your portfolio so you can book future in the future how do you feel about certain types of software? So you got like um, I seen like some free options that you can upgrade on as far as like um, both platforms. Actually, I've seen I've seen Mac has some stuff. I've seen Windows with their versions of certain things. Um, what what are your opinions as far as certain software for editing? Um, the only software that I'm using currently is Lightroom. Um, I know a lot of people use Photoshop. I really hadn't got into the Photoshop. Photoshop is my mainly for those people that want to like manipulate the colors of the clouds and add extra stuff to the photos. But if you just want to get a clean, nice photo, Lightroom is a free option and it gets the job done very well. Do I need to do I need to purchase that via like some sort of application or is that downloaded from the website? Yeah, you can download that through uh like Play Store or anything like that. Now, um if you need more storage, there is like a small subscription fee of like 10 bucks, I think, a month. But if you just want to use it free, it's it's a free version, but you're limited on the amount of space. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And that's pretty standard. Like a lot of times when they're giving out these programs, I see like a lot of nine ninety nine things of that nature. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome yeah. So I don't know what you know about me, man, but I do my research. So if I sit here and say I'm gonna give me a photographer on and I'm gonna talk to him, I'm gonna grab some of his stuff, man. So Okay. Okay. I hope you don't mind. We, we, snag, we snag some of your stuff, man, and I'm gonna kinda get your opinion on some of your own work if that's cool. Okay. Go ahead. All right, All right. so boom. Who is this brother? I'm liking is this a Ferris wheel in the background? What we got going on here? Actually, that is uh, close to downtown Dallas. That's called Margaret Hunt Hill Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, and that is my brother from another mother. Really, 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 really good friend. We were just out one day randomly taking photos and we came up with that. Yeah. I don't know if you hear my niece in the background. She's like, it don't even look like a Ferris wheel. And she knows she's not supposed to be talking while doing interviews. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm trying not to reach back and smack somebody, bro. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, so, yeah. uh, uh, same model, different location? 
Yeah, yes, sir. That is at the Fabrication Yard as well as here in Dallas. The Fabrication Yard is what? It's like basically an old warehouse that is no longer operational that um, artists have went out and just basically tagged all of the walls. Like they do music videos out there, photo shoots, birthday parties, special events and everything. I'm liking the graffiti tags. I'm liking, definitely liking that. Now, yeah, everything out there is definitely tagged and graffitied up. I ain't gonna lie to you, John. Now, I'm also a fan, not only of just like, you know, great photography like we've seen here. I'm also a fan of women, man. And especially <laughs> 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 So, a lot of these next shots are gonna be of the same woman and everything. So, uh, boom. Yeah, that that's my go-to model. I love her to death. Her name is Brittany. She is a music artist. Uh, you can find her on Instagram. I believe it is Honey Seven Music. Gonna look up right now because I love her too. Like never met her, but I love her too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now, so so. The, the scenery is your idea. Obviously, the, the photos are your idea. Are you actually going the next step of, um, you know, how they address things of that nature as well? Or is that a collaborative effort? Um, well, she does her own styling, uh, her own makeup, and I just help with posing and location. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm a big fan of his, but for some reason, I'm forgetting the brother's name. But uh, he came up with the term "ghetto fabulous" and things of that nature. So, uh, what a lot of a lot of what he did was let me pull his name up while I'm sitting here thinking about it. But a lot of what he did, John, was he uh, he um, actually Derek Khan. I didn't even have to look him up. So Derek Khan comes up with the name "ghetto fabulous" and everything. He was responsible for a lot of what you know Mary J. Blige looked like, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And I get I get real interested as far as like the visual aspect of stuff like music videos. Um, I want to say it was Hype Williams. I don't want to be wrong, but I want to say it was Hype Williams. He would do weird stuff like I think he did the Bust Arounds, Put Your Hands Where My Eye Can See video and did some of the Coming to America stuff. But then he okay. also had this theory like, I'm going to take Jodeci and I'm going to put them in the desert. I'm going to have them wear leather. Yeah, like, like who came up with that? <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> So, but but it's cool though because the reason I'm asking this is because a lot of what they did was they decided they were going to um that was going to kind of be like their niche. They were going to take things like certain people weren't doing. So get off after we associate with Derek Khan. We think about high wheels. We think about Jodeci in the desert with leather on. Are you interested mm -hmm. in maybe like uh taking you know more of that um I guess that that ownership role of trying to to just take over the whole suit set and do it exactly how you want to as far as like wardrobe um, and everything? At this point, since I am still, I guess what you would call a rookie professional, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mostly focusing on the image, the posing, and just the quality of the photos right now. That is something that I will be working on here in the near future is like coming up with a whole concept in, in a photo shoot. That is something I will be working on later on down the line. That's dope. But I got to respectfully disagree with you. I can't let you say the word rookie in terms of your name. <laughs> like, like, you're doing dope work, man. And you know what? Um, I hate terms like fake it till you make it because it makes it seem like you don't know how to do this stuff when you say that to people. Yeah, yeah. But um, I will say, you know, just don't don't use that type of terminology in description of yourself and everything, because if you didn't tell me that, I wouldn't know that you've been doing it for like a year. I know we asked the question, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, I get that a lot, and, I, and my thing is honesty. Yeah. I'm real big on honesty. I like to people to know what, what, what they really get. I know my work speaks for itself, but I guess it's just that whole honesty thing with me. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. That's, that's respect and everything too. When that, that's a good, that's a good lesson for me because I invented lying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, and you said her name is Honey. Her name is Honey. Honey Seven is her artist name, but her uh, government name is Brittany. All right, and uh, I see the tag at the bottom on uh, Spot On EP and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, this looks like the same location as your homeboy. Yeah, it's the same location, just a different look. So what's up with the bars and everything? Kind of like, a, you know, what was the symbolism behind that? You know, it was just, it was really random. I just wanted to see 
what it would give, you know, as far as the vibe, you know. Mm -hmm. And to me, it looks like she's trying to break out of the cage. And basically, she is a new recording artist trying to break out into the music world. So that's, that's kind of where that came from. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of why I was going to ask you if you wouldn't know when to say that and everything. But I think it's a nice look. It has a little, has a little pop to it. Yeah. Like it's a dope photo either way, but I feel like I feel like it wouldn't be the same photo without the bars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't give it that that dynamic of I'm in cage, but I need to be out there. Yeah, cool. Sticking with the cage theme too here and everything, and this is different because you gotta. Uh, I thought I had <laughs> downloaded this role when I first saw it. <laughs> no, now this this concept was all her. She was like, I want to look like I'm coming from the side, but the photo is still up. Because if you pay attention to her earring, it's kind of like hanging down. So you can tell that she's coming from the side. Yeah. And the picture is actually supposed to be that way. This photo, that's that's all her idea. I just took it. That's actually dope. That's actually what threw it off of me, man. Because like real talk, like, <laughs> when we were downloading this, I actually downloaded this three times because I was like, Maybe I was, and then I kept flipping it. But then when I flipped it, I noticed that her earring was like at a not a straight out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's another dope. That's another dope one. And um, this is actually one of my favorites here. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. Yeah. So all of these photos here were basically taken like the same day around the same time. So they pretty much all have that. I'm in a cage trying to break out as a music artist vibe to them. Do you have fear of, I know with like actors and musical artists, they get they get a fear of like being cast into only being able to do one thing. So I got, I got like a homeboy who's actually a producer for like Christian hip hop artists. Okay. But you know how the black church wants some work sometimes. They feel like, you know, blessing is getting it for free so they feel like they shouldn't have to pay for the work so he'd be getting his money off a lot of the secular artists but he doesn't want to be seen as a secular producer but that's where a lot of his most you know recognizable work comes from you know actors get you know play the same role and things that all the time and things of that nature um are there any types of shoots that you wouldn't do for fear of being typecast or has some of that already happened to you nope um uh I've never been the guy to fear a little challenge, so I'm pretty much open for everything. Um, the only thing I'm kind of skeptical about is weddings. Because, you know, the brides can turn into bridezillas. Everything got to be perfect and to the T. And one wedding could probably tarnish or, you know, just kill your business altogether. Got to share a story, man. Personal experience. <laughs> this, this is what I... This, I can't tell you what to do because you're better at what you do than I am. Like I do it because I enjoy it. You do it as a profession, but I will give you some advice anyway. Okay. Kick everybody out of the room when you start taking these wedding photos, man. Because then what you get, what, what what you get is I kept seeing this while I'm editing the photo, and then they get mad about it. So you talk about Brazilians. You go into this this shoot right, and you want to you want to film the entire wedding party, but you got 17 people behind you with their own cameras. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And every single one of them is like, look over here. So you got one photo with one wedding party and they all look at the 19 different directions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that, some people don't notice that, but people who are really paying attention do. And that drives me crazy, man. Yeah, especially if there's a hired photographer. This is just a tidbit of information for everybody that's watching. If there's a hired photographer, please step out the way. Just step out the way and let the photographer do that thing, and you can do yours afterwards. They don't get that, though, man. I'm telling you, you're going to have to keep the people out of the room. So, <laughs> <laughs> and this is, uh, again, look, same location, same model, different, yeah. um, different spot at the same place. Yeah, it's like I said, I want to say it's like a city block of just random buildings that have been graffitied. They change every day, week to week. So it's just, it's a different vibe out at the fabrication yard. Pretty much every other day, it's a different look out there. So kind of like a park then, basically. Yeah. And it's not, it's not used for anything in particular, just. Nope. It's just an open building sitting on a city block. 
um, where people go and and do their art. See, that's called that's called culture, man. Like I'll be honest with you, like um, like Philly roots. Uh, I got family up and down the East Coast right now. I'm like 10 minutes outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. And the one thing we always complain about in Charlotte is a lack of culture. Like everybody's from somewhere else. Like you got, it's the only city I've been in where 40% of the city is from the city and the other 60% is from somewhere else. So you get a little New York, depending on where you're at, you get a little Atlanta here and there. Um, They copy a lot of what they do from other cities and things of that nature, but it's like no culture and stuff like that. Because Charlotte would have messed something like this up. They'd have tore it down. <laughs> like we got to put like a Bojangles here or something. That's the kind of stuff they do, man. They have a okay. they have a music factory, which is a studio. The music factory, they um, it was cool. It was a studio, and all these different artists and all these different teams working in the studio. But then they overdid it, John. They got the they got to have restaurants out there. They got a bowling alley, a concert venue. The concert venue was dope, but it's like why we can't just be a studio. Yeah, why can't we just leave it at what it was? Right, right. That's dope stuff, man. So yeah, like I said, we had to we had to steal some of your work there and everything to kind of show what you what you're doing. So you're featured in the Bam Guy magazine coming up, um, inaugural issue. Um, how did you how did you meet Toy and Jen? Well, actually, me and Jennifer, we uh we went to the high school together. We were in band together. Um and I noticed on her social media that they were getting ready to start or do the second issue of Bam Woman magazine. And I was just trying to get my name out there as a photographer. So I reached out to Jen in her inbox and was like, hey, I'm just trying to get my name out there. I don't know if you guys already have a photographer or not, but I would be open and willing to, you know, jump on board and help you guys out where I could. And, and that's how that started. How many, um, so a lot of the photos we're seeing in the Bam Woman magazine is your work as well? Um, I know the cover of issue two is my work. Um, with Precious Thornton. With, with Precious Thornton. Thornton. Yeah, I we think got it. her. I think she, bring it up, bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, there it is. I told you we That's do our homework, man. We do our homework, man. Yeah, and then um, I think she had a four page spread. Those photos, I believe, are mine as well. Mm -hmm. um, there should be a few of Toya and Jennifer that I've done that should be either in the magazine or on the website. This is the same thing you're saying. The uh, you know, Precious did the uh, the look, and you kind of came up with the idea. How did this uh, this come? Because that's a dope color. Um, she actually, uh, Toya and Jennifer actually brought in a makeup artist and a stylist. So they had that covered. I was just strictly, again, focusing on the photo, making sure the framing and coloring and all of that was correct. Cool. And it came out dope, man. It never came out dope. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I was really excited about that one. So you was in the band and Jim was in the band? Yep. What was you playing? Saxophone. I cannot play a woodwind instrument, man. Like, I have, <laughs> I can play the piano. <laughs> I can play all three guitars. When I was in the band, I played the trumpet, but it was like, I gotta be, I gotta shine, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. It was too many trumpets. We had like 16 to 17 trumpets. So I moved right. over to the baritone. So now I gotta learn bass clip. But it was only yeah. baritone, so I can shine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wanted to now the crazy is my sister is nine years older than me. She mm -hmm. played this, she played the clarinet. So my mom and daddy wanted me to play the clarinet so they wouldn't have to buy another instrument. That ain't happening. That ain't gonna happen again. <laughs> declare that like declare that to me was a girl's instrument. Like I don't care how nobody feel about that. Declare that to me was a girl's instrument. But I feel like the se if we can use the word sexy with music, I feel like the saxophone is the sexiest Small. instrument it is. it is. But I cannot play a woodwind instrument. I can't never I can't get sound out of it. Yeah, I actually wanted to play the alto, which is like the medium sized yeah. saxophone, but I've always been the taller, bigger guy. So my band director put me on the tenor. So that's yeah. what I that's what I played through middle school and high school. But yes, saxophone is probably one of the sexiest instruments there is out there. Yeah, that get that that you know we we're, we're trying to keep it G rated and everything, not making a dope show, man. But that get about the close. Yeah, also, also, also is uh, what Kenny G played. 
No, he played the soprano. It's the shape he of the clarinet. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep. And that's what you played? No, I played the tenor. It's actually bigger the than the alto. Yeah. Yeah, played so it goes soprano, alto, tenor, and then baritone, saxophone. What was Jen playing? Clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, man. Wow, man. Give me your, um, give me your contact information again. All right. Again, Instagram is spot on EP. Facebook is the same, um, at spot on EP. Email address is spot on EP at gmail.com. Word up, word up. Twitter is Bam Woman, um, at Bam Woman, IG, Bam Woman Magazine. And make sure you like, uh, Bam Guy Magazine and Bam Woman Magazine on Facebook, man. You gotta make sure you do that. Yep. Well, it's been an honor and a privilege, John. Like I said, this is one of the ones I was waiting on, and um, this is actually the last interview I did for uh, the Bam Guy Mag and everything. And I say the best for last, most definitely. Right on, right on. No Next disrespect. Release. No disrespect to anybody you know, else. <laughs> yeah, people sensitive, man. So not to not to not to diss nobody. Cedric, Cedric Bellamy is a is a homeboy of mine. Love you to death, Cedric, and everything stuff too, man. But you are you a different beast, man. And I I respect what you're doing. Um, watch what you do as a fan, because like I said, like I don't know what it is, man. Like I want to be good at things that <laughs> I'm not good at. <laughs> I want to be a photographer, man. Like I'm serious. I'm serious. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be looking for when I walk into Best Buy. Um, I would I would definitely advise you to Google some yeah. some cameras do some research get some reviews on different things that's what i did i was going to go with the cheaper camera but i was like nah i'm gonna outgrow it too fast and you also don't want to get something too basic where you outgrow it so fast that you spend more money to upgrade to keep up with how fast you grow you want to get something a little bit more advanced than what you actually are that's smart that's smart that's yep. more. I did the opposite. See, that's why I had you on. Man. <laughs> I sat there and said, you know, I don't know how I only do this. I don't know how to do this and everything. Let me just go with what I just, you know, what I'm saying. But that's 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 wise advice. Yep. Anything you need, um, anybody to know? Maybe something we didn't touch on. Um, I think we pretty much covered everything that I got going on. Uh, please book. Uh, affordable pricing. Uh, budget friendly. I will travel. Uh. Reach out to me. Let let's talk. Let's let's do business. John Preston is featured in Bam Guy Magazine. We definitely appreciate it, brother. And Bam Magazine is released May twenty second. Is that right? I should know the answer to that, but I got to double check. <laughs> we, we should we should both know the answer to that. <laughs> we should both know that. I um I, I think it's so May twenty second. My mind worked different, man. Like, I don't remember release dates. I remember deadlines. I know we got to get this done before the release date. I can never remember the release date. <laughs> I think like, it's the 22nd of May. I know when we got to be at the recording studio. I know we got to do this. Like, I don't know when the first Eagles game is. I know when training camp is. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do better. We got to do yeah. better, brother. That's the that's man quality, though. We'll, we blame that on being men. Okay. I appreciate you, bro. All right, Jeff. Good one.